Playmaker. They'll take away a Zed regardless because it was kind of an issue. But of course, the Vladimir shut him down. Uh, I guess Arden just don't want to pick another Vladimir here and be like, uh, well, we're going to pick Vlad every game and not be predictable. And then LeBlanc will come out as another ban against Expecte. I think one of the options, one of the other things here is Origin are saying we don't want the Zed. Mm -hmm. It's not first pick priority for them. So uh, they don't want it falling to the second round for Reason Gaming. They, they, it's just another champion that they'd rather not have to deal with here. Uh, through the second picks stage. LeBlanc getting banned out as well. Very similar out from Reason Gaming. As I said, I yeah, honestly think the Maokai should just follow up here as well. Yeah, uh, very, very likely. Just onto Soaz again, force him onto something a little different. And there we go. There we go. Okay, everything as expected from the bans. Now, let's see if they do anything different in, ch in the champion picks, because this is where it could potentially get interesting. This is also the last chance for the teams to pull out anything uh, potentially different that they've been planning for. This is the final game. I mean, Reason Gaming weren't really pressured to bring anything new out in that last game. So it's interesting because we know that, uh, or at least we have spoken to Reason a little bit, and they were talking about a strat that they have. They, yeah. they did, never really divulged what it was, so I'm wondering exactly whether they're going to bring it out now. Obviously, yeah. we haven't seen anything too crazy in game one and two, but if they have been practicing with something different now, may very well be the time to bring it out. Very true. Uh, yeah, they were saying they uh, practiced in a couple of scrims against some uh, some of the different teams they've been playing against. We'll see if they actually bring out here because they need the conditions to be right for it. Okay. We'll Is see that what if they said? Origin will create that. Okay. Well, I was prodding and they were okay. like, I'm not going to tell you anything. Yeah, so. I know, because they wouldn't tell me either. Yeah. So it's, we, it's, there's something that Reason will do, but we yeah. know one thing that Origin have done and that is make their first pick. Yeah, and it's their first pick is just going to be a very solid Morgana, the ultimate of flex picks. Can you go top, mid, support. support. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, on Reason Gaming, they'll pick up their Janna. Took far less time than Origin did with their first pick, and it will be Take Fun going for the Ari again, as he did in Take uh, 1. Take one, was, game one, game one. Take fun, have take fun. fun. <laughs> uh, game uh, one went really well for yeah. uh, take fun on Ari as well. Uh, so I think that's a really solid pickup. Same yeah, with the Janna, sure. it's extra disengage here that the Reason Gaming are going to have. It's not quite Libix play style when you look at things, but he prefers his Thresh, but he's, he just not, isn't opting for that. They want to take the Janna away. Yeah. Don't let Mithy get the Janna that he played in game two, as that was another big factor of the disengage. Yeah, I do wonder whether they'll uh, pick something else with Janna again, maybe something later game. Uh, Selva, every single game so, ha so far, has picked up a later game champion. Um, we'll see what Origin go for here, what jungle they'll go for. Amazing has typically favored uh, Gragas over the Swajani, but Swajani will give them way more engage and maybe allow Soas to get on top of the competition. Sive will do the same as I just mentioned, allow them to get into the fight, and they'll be going with this one for Niels. Uh, I don't necessarily recall if Niels has played this one before. Yeah, that's actually what I was just looking to check. I actually don't believe he has. But again, this is a different no, type of has. composition this for is a, yeah. This is a different champion for yeah. Niels. Dead on the money. Okay, so Reason Gaming, well, we've talked about disengage from the Janna. They're going to go back to basics, go back to game one with the Ari, the Tristana, and the Janna. This is exactly how it went last time. Uh, they may just go for the whole shebang and go for everything. Uh, they can't go for the Hecarim from game one. They can't, yeah. That's the one thing. So, so they'd be needing a top lane engaged mm -hmm. champion if they wanted to run something that was similar. Uh, so, like Zach. <laughs> like Zach, but we haven't really seen Zach in the top lane too much we did in by competitive. Mouse. Yeah, we did by Mouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't remind me about that series, but uh, yeah. we haven't seen it too much in competitive, uh, and I actually don't know that we'd see it again at this point. Uh, I mean, Kuban has other options. Yeah, His Aurelia is actually open, should he look to, to pick it up. Yeah, Gregus, the flex pick here, could be top, could be jungle. We saw Soaz play it earlier, top lane building full AP, didn't exactly have a huge impact on the game Indeed. as such. I actually expect that to be a jungle. Uh, Gragas on Zayu with Kuban taking his Irelia. He, he doesn't want to blind pick Irelia though into a potential bad top lane matchup. They've got the flex of Morgana. Mm. But if he does get his Irelia, that's another great uh, uh, great thing within the arsenal because yeah. Kuban's Irelia is great. We saw it in this expansion tournament. We've just yep. seen it for months and months, years and years. So he's always going to be solid on that pick. Origin, what do they go for now? Because they have the they have the uh, Morgana, which can be in support, can be in the top lane. They're hovering over the Rumble, which would suggest the Morgana would be in that bot lane support. And they also hover the Vladimir as well. So it worked last game. They have the Sivir this time as well. Yep. The On the Hunt comes in, Vladimir runs at you. You try and CC him down, 
Sticky Pools. So it's very difficult to get away from. Uh, no doubt he'll just go for the Flash and Ghost again if that is the case. Okay, gets locked in as well. All right. So, yeah, they will go for that. They'll go for the Vlad and they'll go for the Rumble in the top lane. Different matchup as well now. Vladimir into Ari uh, a little bit... I, 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 again, Vladimir is not a champion that we see all that much to, to kind of definitively say matchups, but Peke is obviously very confident against Take Fun's Ari here. So uh, Vlad's going to want to split push. Somebody's going to have to stop him and maybe it would be in an Aurelia. It, maybe. Or, uh, Aurelia wants to split push herself. We're in a very weird situation like last yeah, game. where they will just bump heads in that 4-1. Yeah, very possible. Um, but if they do lock this in, I mean, it would make perfect sense because of Kuban's Aurelia. But yeah. again, this time, Origin, it feels like they have more of a cohesive uh, composition. Because last time they had bits and bobs, but now they have let's just get into the fight. Let's just CC them. Let's kill them all with Vladimir. Um, everything laid on top of each other. Like, this is a composition that will just, if it gets ahead, they just team fight and team fight and team fight. Yeah. They've got to get ahead, though. Yeah. They <laughs> They've have, done it in though. both games. Yeah. They have. Second game, more than the first game. All right. So that much makes sense. It's going to be the Aurelia for Kuban in the top lane. It's going to be that Jungle Gragas. It will be take fun on his champion of the first game. And everything else is the same from that first game. Tristana and also the Janna for the bot lane. And apart from that, nothing too much out of the ordinary. No, but I'm interested to see how Seliver's Tristana is going to work. We were highlighting the AD carriers as we came into this matchup. And Seliver looked good in game one, didn't look so good in game two. And, and that's a bit worrying. I, I, I wonder whether Seliver needed, uh, in the same way that Origin needed the loss, maybe after a great game, maybe he relaxed a little bit too much and was like, okay, well, we can just do the same again. Yeah, I also didn't think, um, because last time it was very easy for him in game one to get away. Uh, because yes. there was so much in front of him and so much peel. In the second game, he was on a cog. He didn't have that rocket jump that Tristana has. So this time he does. We'll see if it works. So everything is on the line for this final game. So you can vote for the team you think w uh, who will clinch the final win using the hashtags OGWIN or RGWIN. And we'll be checking in with your opinion during the match. So far, it's gone from 7% to 12% for Reason Gaming. We'll see if it increases again. They did lose that last game, but if you think they're going to take the series, then now would be the time to uh, get in on the underdogs in this series. Is it going to be 5% either way again? Is it going back down to 7% or is it going up Maybe to 17 Very possible. Let's get into this game and answer all of our questions and all of your questions over there at home. We will see how this works. Origin now onto the blue side once again from game one. They did have that higher seed, finishing number one. Oh, that was a little weird from Zayo. <laughs> uh, finishing first seed in the round robin, nine and one to Reason Gaming, who uh, barely scraped into the playoffs with the fourth seed, taking that from Team Dignitas EU. And now they are one win away from getting to the finals, or potentially one loss from going into that third place game and meeting Gamers 2 who are waiting anxiously to see who they'll be facing in that third place game and keeping their playoff or keeping their promotion dreams alive. Fourth place will uh, requalify for summer challenger series. So they are safe no matter what happens in this one. But of course, you do want to qualify for a, a chance at making LCS because that's the dream. That is the dream. Hashtag LCS the dream. <laughs> but uh, I mean, if you game us too, you. It, as good as Reason Gaming have looked today, if you game as two, you still want Origin to win this game. So you don't have to play Origin to to make your way into the to the promotion tournament. Reason Gaming have shown us, though, that uh, they can compete with Origin. And we, that's why we're in game three. And being in game three still bodes well for Reason Gaming because this composition, the later and later the game goes, again, is going to be good for Reason. They've got Norelia, they've got a Tristana as well. So if this one goes late, Reason will breathe somewhat of a sigh of relief mm. that they can get Seliva and his carry pants back on. That's true, but we do have a Vladimir from x Peke who will yes, be able to scale equally true. as well into the late game. Severe as well, not too shabby. Not as bad as a uh, Corky who spikes in the mid game. And so is, of course, with the uh, ultimate, always going to be useful. So at least Origin do have something they can do in the late game rather than just die, which was what they did in game one. And only just hope that they can uh, outsmite them at Baron. Which never happened. Which never happened. Kuban <laughs> going to be taking these Krugs at top lane here. 
And are we going to have these lane swap shenanigans again? Potentially. Here comes the wars coming out. Amazing and so as going up against this blue buff. Miffy as well onto the opposing blue buff, just seeing what's up. And who can get these early movements. So it is Saliva and Libic sitting in the top lane for this lane swap. It will be Niels and Miffy down here in the bottom lane. Miffy is still sat on top of this blue buff. He doesn't have a water play, so he's just waiting for that to go down. Finally, he can do it. There we go. Take Fun getting the harassment down onto Peke, so having a little bit better of an early laning phase than he was a Zed as the last game. And Coupon and Zayu still heading towards their blue buff, which has been warded, but Amazing and Soaz are just going to go for their second buff as well. So they'll have the knowledge, they just won't be disrupting it. Yeah, it has been spotted out. Bottom lane, though, uh, Origin are pushing fairly hard here, and it's something you don't see all that often from these lane swap scenarios, is normally you'd expect a freeze, but uh, Niels has shoved a big wave into this tower. Will we see Aurelia get there in time? Origin are actually going to push up and try and deter Aurelia from getting any of this experience, or at least for as long as they can. Amazing's coming over the wall, Kuban's in trouble. Oh, he locks him down with the binding as well. There comes the boomerang blade. Zayu will be backing away with his ally of Kubon just getting in there to body block for him. But that has done enough to send him packing back to base and allows them to clear out this minion wave. Also means that big minion wave from Origin will all just crash against the turret and all be taken down. So not only do they get a decent amount of damage onto the turret, but they've denied Kubon hard. And he has to teleport if he wants to get any of this experience. The problem is Mithy and Niels have put so much damage down onto this turret that it is a very hostile area should he choose to teleport in. He's in top lane, in fact. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, his teleport has gone down top lane, so they want to get this uh, one versus one setup. As uh, Kubon was not feeling that bottom lane. However, Kuban has got more CS from his uh, ability to roam around the jungle. So is his only on 4 CS so far. Yeah, it did mean the bot lane from Niels is slightly ahead. Ooh, Hex Peke, Zayu. though, does get ignited up. Zayu from the sidelines. He'll follow up with the barrel as well, plus the ignite. He won't be dying from this, but it is uh, certainly annoying. It will mean take fun's very low on mana, so Zayu will just be here to help him push it in. Good barrel roll placement from Zayu. He knew that Peke would have wanted to go in a straight line, get as far mm. away as he could. Popped it straight on his head as soon as he comes up from the pool. He hit a skull shot. Good job. Vlad was expecting it all to be blood around him, but it turns out it was just Grog. <laughs> and Zayu will be uh, taking down the crab again. Extra 50 gold on top of that 15 gold from his uh, jungle item, of course. So as in the top lane, misses a CS. Saw that. Zayu, though, <laughs> will be finding oh. him in the top lane. will catch him with the body slam, forces the flash out. And so as is uh, catching up on CS, but now he's a flash down. Kubon also has his flash down from earlier, so they'll just be sharing that same fate. So as still has his teleport though, so he has that advantage. Yeah, and so as has got no potion, so he has to be careful here. Uh, with knowing Zayu was kind of around the area, Zayu could loop back and cross over that ward. Yes, he'd get a little bit of an uh, advance warning, but uh, still has to watch out for Zayu's pathing here and actually you can see that Amazing is going to head up to this top side jungle just to counter gank I would imagine there's not exactly too much kill pressure here unless Kubon really messes this up. Yeah Zayu will also be coming up here as well just in case if he can try and get a counter gank Ooh. down but Kubon just wants to sit under his turret and farm away and his that is his current goal in life. Mid lane Take Fern has gone back to base picked up the Aether Wisp meanwhile X Peke has uh, picked up a normal magic mantle and his amp tome, so building towards his early game items here. Bot lane uh, is Niels picking up a very early pickaxe, actually not deciding to wait a little bit and go for the uh, BS sword, which would be the bigger spike. Trying to spend all the gold as it comes in. And the double Durant out from Saliva. And I wonder whether Peke is going to build towards the uh, the Will of the Ancients again this time early on, or whether he'll opt for the Abyssal Scepter against Ari. Obviously now he's uh, in against uh, versus Magic lane. He may have to itemize a bit differently. He probably won't opt for the Zonyas quite as fast in this game. He got an Abyssal Scepter in the last one, but maybe a little bit more necessary against Take Fun earlier on in the game. And actually, I expect he's going to go take away the Raptor camp as well. So Amazing finds himself a little bit down on experience, actually, because of that. So far, neither team has drawn ahead. Uh, Zayu will be popping up his uh, razor sharp buff, but I'll be showing him a pink <laughs> ward. Oh, amazing. That's so disheartening. Amazing. It's like, I really want this Whoa. ward. Oh, it's going it to time out. Uh, nope. And there will be a Howling Gale who he receives instead, but Miffy is there to back him up. Does get down uh, the uh, the binding, and Libic will be using his 
Trinket to clear away that ward again. Question is, will Miffy put another ward down? Ooh, so that's taking a lot of damage from Kubon though. He uses the Transcendent Blaze to get the advantage in that lane, so as does not have the ultimate himself. But now Kubon is completely out of mana, so he'll be heading back to base. He has, however, built up a very large gold lead. 43 farm against 29. Oh, Libic takes aggro. some damage. Not quite. Uh, Libic actually angers the uh, dragon himself. Zayu takes the crab, and really gaming actually do go for this one. So they clear out the minion, or they clear out the ward, and now they go for the dragon itself. Uh, mid lane is pushing, so uh, expect it can't really front the respond. This is very similar timing to game one as well from Reason Gaming. Uh, pretty much the same setup from Reason as well. So she's dropping fairly low. Mithy now knows that they're doing it. They have had that ward in the back of the pit as well. Teleport coming in from Soaz. He does not have his ultimate. Dragon is down. And Xpeki comes in from the mid lane. He has been exhausted. It's so not doing too much damage at the moment. Teller is trying to back away. This is the heal coming out as well. Miffy will be following up the damage. Hey, take fun. We'll be jumping away with his ultimate. First blood goes to amazing. And Soaz will be overheated. So he'll back into the middle lane. A nice first blood and the dragon though going over to Reason. Reason Gaming, so first blood for Dragon. I feel like Reason Gaming got a little bit ahead. Can Origin get anything else from this though? Amazing straight away goes to take away the enemy jungle. And uh, it looks like Soaz is going to return back up to the top lane. Take fun is out of mana here as well, so he is going to have to recall too. This is the time that everybody is going to head back, and you can see Peke has opted for uh, that uh, Hextech Revolver first once again. Yep, uh, he is on 68 farm currently. This is the blue buff again being contested by these teams. I feel like we see this every single game. They really like that blue buff. This specifically the one on the red hand side. Take Funnel will be taking that one away. Now on the bot lane, Nils is uh, now ahead of Saliva by around 20 CS, so it is a decent amount. But that first blood managed to get an assist onto everyone on the team. Top lane, <laughs> just trading Ooh. off. Yeah, Kubon thought he had the better trade then and then took Tower Aggro for yeah. uh, a hit. So Soaz actually comes out the better from that small trade. So let's take a look at the uh, just general vision game as well, because we were talking about in game one how these teams uh, ward a lot more than the other teams in the rest of the uh, EU Challenger series, and so far they've already been keeping it up. Typically when objectives start being a thing, uh, the teams really start to ramp up in the amount of vision they put down. Bot lane, Selva is trying to aggress onto this turret. He has Limic there as well to increase the damage. We'll be getting the uh, explosive charge down onto the tower, which will do even more damage. Miffy able to take out this ward, which is just in range of the pink ward. Niels is up in CS again, uh, but he's actually opted for the level two boots, the Berserker's Greaves, very early on. And uh, Niels, his itemization is so far behind because of it. And top lane, Zayu is going in first. Amazing is there to counter engage though. Lands a great ultimate onto two players, onto Zayu and Kubon, who will be dropping first. Juice into the bush to cut the vision. Kubon, can he get in range for the auto attack? Turns around! He gets the Junkyard Titan extra damage and goes for the two and zero. What a perfect counter gank. Great counter gank there out of amazing good ult. And Soaz just manages to turn it around and get so much damage. And that's a massive power play out from Origin. It puts them very far around ahead now in this early game and they're going to be able to put damage onto this turret as well. Kubons may choose to teleport in on this. I, I wonder whether he'll hold it and just let them get a lot of damage down on this tower. Boomerang Blade gets one, gets two, takes some damage onto Salva in the bot lane. He's still got his flash and busts the shot. Still lagging behind in farm, however. But back down to this bottom lane as you were talking about, uh, no BF sword even out yet from Niels. He's actually opted for the components of a pickaxe. Now, I'm assuming, uh, not a pickaxe, uh, a last whisper. I'm assuming he will still go a standard build of Infinity Edge into subsequent items. But that's a lot of gold now invested into things that aren't a BF sword, which deters from his Infinity Edge spike. And he's going to push it lower, uh, further and further with that second attack speed item as well. So uh, Seliva is getting led off a little bit on his itemization by the fact that Niels has opted for his level 2 boots. Yeah, it's a little odd. Uh, typically, we never see uh, le uh, level 2 boots picked up so early on the AD carries, but it will give him the extra movement speed, I guess. And plus, when we get to these uh, these team fights as well, it really is just about the ultimate and getting Peke to the back lines. He hasn't uh, completely destroyed mid lane. Uh, take Fun is drawing basically even with him so far, but he's also started to take the. I wanted to say Rave Camp, but it's uh, not the Raptors. That was a long time ago. And he starts taking those, so he will be getting ahead in farm ever so slightly. Zayu now heads into the mid lane. If he wants a gank to happen, it's going to take uh, quite a lot to kill Xpeke, as he has both of his summoners, his pool, and he's almost impossible to pin down unless they land a charm. 
He's probably going to head back soon, though. He is sat on 1,200 gold right now, so uh, he's likely to head back. But both junglers have convened in this bottom lane as well. Both have been spotted on wards. So I don't actually expect too much to happen from this because both teams should be aware from the way the other are playing that uh, neither jungler can really get into this. But Amazing has left the lane. Sayu is still around but is now turning tail back into the jungle himself. So Dragon is spawning in 1 minute 20 seconds. Uh, Zayu has gone back to base. He's picked up his Barmy Cinder, which will be going into his Cinder Hulk, of course. Won't be going into a Sunfire Cape. Uh, Take Fun has picked up his Ludens now as well, so starting to pick up um, some big power spikes from Reason Gaming, which is perfect timing for the Dragon just coming up. Question of whether Niels and Peke can do the same, but Niels has really delayed himself. Uh, amazing in the jungle has got his Cinder Hulk. So as manages to Ooh, get a Peke. bit of damage down onto his item build, but Take Fun now with this item lead, trying to put it down onto X Peke, gets the Sanguine Pool out. He'll flash away from the last uh, Q coming out from Ari, and Amazing will spook Take Fun, so he has to flash away. Amazing did have his ultimate if he really wanted to use it on him, plus the flash to get in range for Arctic Assault, so it was a wise choice. But Take Fun trying to take advantage of his item spikes. Yeah, Take Fun doesn't have flash available here, so they can't flash ult, and Amazing actually shows himself in this lane, so Reason is just waiting for Origin potentially to. Uh, push up into that bush. So in that little trade there, all the summoners were used by both mid laners and both ultimates. So as far behind as x -Pek a dropped, the one other key thing, Take Fun not running a mana regen item, uh, can't regen to continue to fight in that middle lane. Peke just needed a few minutes, uh, a few seconds yeah. to, to regenerate his way up using his abilities. So from there, Peke actually somehow ended up coming out slightly ahead when it comes to lane pressure, but Soaz is in danger. Reason Gaming in the top lane, though. Here comes the barrel roll, follows up with the equalizer onto the minion wave, just trying to Bottom get lane. something to happen. The Celeber, though, will be taken down in turn and jumps over the wall. That's another flash from Nils. There's another flash from Celeber. Last auto attack as the Buster Shot comes through will be enough to take him out. Four and one currently on the scoreboard, plus the bottom tower going over to Origin. They're really starting to pull ahead. Yeah, one for one trade overall, but that tower is going to make all the difference for now. Dragon has spawned as well, so Origin uh, can turn to look at it. But this is, again, very similar to game number one, where they're going to push out the bottom tower first. Make sure that wave of minions, uh, or the next wave, will bounce from the turret and uh, force them not to be able to pick up too much experience here before turning for the Dragon. Yeah, so top tower will go down. Kubo making sure that it kills this last minion before he uh, finishes off the turret here. Dragon is up. It will be started by Amazing. Bottom lane is being pushed in by Origin. They may even pick up a second turret here, which would be fantastic for them. Selva, good sidestep yeah, away from the binding. And that just goes down. Amazing is still soloing up the Dragon. And there's so much vision control around there. It's completely secured by Origin. And Reason Game do not even have a bead on it. They do not even have the timer. No, and especially with the towers going down in the bottom lane, a Reason definitely won't have an exact timer because there was no point at which uh, Origin completely disappeared from the map. Mm. So now Reason are left guessing uh, what did go down from Libix, and now they know it is indeed gone. Libix clears out the pink ward, but it's too little too late. Yeah, they can also just hit tab and be like, oh, they picked up a dragon, so that must mean they took it just a yep. couple seconds ago. True. Uh, 4,000 gold advantage. Peke just get caught in the middle lane, but he still has Sanguine Pool, remember? He'll be going into it right now. Zayu is sitting on top of him. Libix is there to seal the deal, and Take Fun comes in with the very last charge of Spirit Rush to finish him off. So. Vladimir apparently can bleed. Uh, Kubon in the top lane though, aggressing onto Soas. Niels is also there. He'll be flashing away. Top tower is very low for him as well, so I'm not entirely sure if he can defend it, but he can if Niels just gets out of dodge. Middle lane, reason game, pick up a tower. Libic. One tap. Got it. <laughs> yeah, even buffs himself with his shield, so make sure it dies. And bottom turret also falls, so all of the outer turrets fall to Reason Gaming in the blink of an eye. That's a really good passage to play out of Reason Gaming, and it all stemmed from the fact that X Peke still didn't have his summoners available. It's an easy kill onto Peke once he'd pushed out, and not even the pool was enough to save him. So uh, Reason Gaming firing back once again. That's actually drawn this game uh, far more level than Origin would want it to be at this point into the game. They're only 1,500 gold up when uh, they were just about three and a half thousand about a minute ago. That was indeed the case. And amazing, now takes that crab. He will be securing that vision in the upper river. And now going into this bush. He already did have the uh, razor sharp buff, so he didn't necessarily need to use his own sweeper. Wards go down all over the top side. They are gearing up to try and take this low health tower. Libic is here to try and shield it up, though. 
I'm not sure if they can defend. Nils and Miffy. Kuban trying to go for the engage, though. He will be jumping in. There's the on the hunt. He turns around. Cool. So much damage from Nils. Heads in with the boomerang blade. Libic is maybe sticking around for a little too long. Can't afford to get tagged by a dark binding. Top tower goes down and a kill. So as uh, down in the bottom lane pushing as well from that engage, but it's mid lane again. Take fun again, moving on to x -Packy. There's a Sanguine pool. Can he survive after it? Jukes out of the way of the Tides of Blood. There comes the Orb of Deception. Takes him out. One on one kill. Take fun, just showing who's boss. Oh, uh, x a little bit uh, maybe distracted by the fact that he just got killed. Comes back into lane, maybe not expecting the Ignite to be up from Take Fun. That's one of the key factors in that small engage there. And Take Fun comes out ahead because of it. He has a lot of damage right now from that Luden's Echo and the uh, now needlessly large rod on top of it. Mm. But uh, that Ignite timing, shredding through the, uh, the, the regeneration that Vladimir wants. Here Teleport is Kuban. coming through from Kuban. He's into the backside of this fight. He doesn't want it, though. He's looking for the flank, but the team isn't quite in position. It's not the fight that they want, not the fight that they're looking for. And Big cooldown. Yeah, long cooldown. He wasn't even to a tower, so it's going to be on its maximum cooldown for that Teleport. Selva and Take Fun will clear out the minion wave, however. It has been a while since we've really looked at the scoreboard because the teams have been trading objectives constantly. Three towers to three so far. And the gold totals are starting to stabilize. However, Origin are still slightly ahead. Top lane, Kuban is now ahead in CS. Mid lane, the same story for Reason Gaming. But bot lane, Niels is 40 farm ahead of Selva, plus those two kills. So significantly ahead of his counterpart. Has translated into that zeal, you can see. And uh, the makings of even more damage. Whereas Selva only sitting on his infinity yet. However, the later that game drags on, well, we saw a perfect example in the form of game one, mm. how difficult Salva can be to deal with. For sure. And uh, interestingly enough, Niels actually picks himself up a fairly early red buff as well, as uh, Amazing did just give that over to Niels. So that will help with Niels' damage and ability to stick on top of people in these fights. But they've already got a fair amount of mobility when it comes to it with that Sivir ultimate and uh, also the dual mobility summoners on x -Peke. So uh, Origin are in a good spot right now, but certainly they cannot disrespect Reason like they did in the first game. That was one of the biggest problems with uh, why Reason stayed in, was Origin just honestly weren't respecting. Yeah, that is uh, that's pretty true. Yep. That's a true statement, Stress. And the bot lane, Selva pushing up in here against Niels. See if a fight erupts. And talking about Nils, he's really typically strayed away from the picks like Sivir. He's gone for the more AD casters. He's gone for the Corkies, the Graves. Uh, he went for Cogmore, of course, when we saw them run the Juggermore. But typically, this isn't his style of play. So it's interesting that he's gone for this this game. But it's a compositional choice, which is cool to see that he has that in his arsenal if the team needs it. Yeah, and it, it's not the only thing about this composition that is uh, a compositional choice rather than a, a pure itemization. You look at Sejuani, uh, has the Righteous Glory out from the mm. jungle as well. It's not always the most standard item that you'll see. Ooh, Peke will, you know, the sigh of relief that that charm didn't land him. That could have been a very dead Vladimir. Yeah, Tafun also had to burn his uh, Spirit Rush because Miffy's Dark Binding almost hit him. Not sure if it would have. It timed out just before it got to him. Even so, better be better to be safe than sorry than to die. Who won in the top lane. lane? So as with the ultimate, only well, fairly good positioning, but he's still being chased after by Kubon. Kubon has run out of juice and will not be following him down. Libic and Selva now return to their bottom lane habitat. They have found Niels, though. Ooh, Niels. Remember, he has spell shield, so he'll be using that one right now, looking to block the buster shot out. He'll be flashing away and using the heal. They so turn. they take both his summoners and his ultimate. Zayu is here to try and zone Zayu uh, to zone amazing away. Here comes Good the ult. bowler onto no two. No follow up though. No one's there, but now Peke is coming into this battle. He's split up. The whole of Origin is really split up in this fight. Take one will be coming forward. Sanguine pool cuts his own health bar. He'll be flashing away from the charm, and Miffy and Niels were just. Pretty much farming in the bottom lane. He was really just down to Peke to try and get away from uh, that catch. Origin completely on different pages here. Both summoners used by X Peke, and especially considering that a dragon just came up at the same time. This now leaves Peke in a position behind the dragon. They're looking for a steal from Amazing. He doesn't get it. Goes over to take fun. What is it in this series about uh, junglers not picking up the Ooh. objectives? It's always either the AD carry or the mid laner. It's always down to the wire. Getting a little antsy, you have to feel, these junglers and these teams, because there's so much on the line. The winner of this game will be going to the finals and uh, going for a chance at automatically promoting into the LCS. A chance like that does not come around 
all the time. In fact, it does that once a split. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like clockwork, yeah. but it's not often. Yes. And so uh, you can count on that. But Reason Gaming are in a great position for uh, how the roster has looked over the group stage. They they weren't the top teams. They certainly have snuck under the radar of Origin here. And both teams right now, they're one game away. And as yeah. you said, that doesn't come around very often. Well, as this team fight gears up, we'll see if anything really happens. But I do want to theorize a little bit, because if Origin drop down and go into the promotion tournament, they could be facing either Giants or, uh, or Rockat. And most likely Rockat, uh, or most likely Giants, rather. And in that match, I still feel Origin would come out ahead. We'll see if that's the case. Libic, <laughs> very close to being caught by Amazing. But uh, it's a very interesting topic, because that could very well be the case, depending on how this single game goes. In that case, uh, it, I mean, obviously they'd have to get dropped down into the Correct. Course. That is, uh, that would be what would happen. They'd either have to drop down from the winners or win the losers match, the yeah. third place match. Uh, but one thing I want to focus on from this game uh, is that you can see how much trouble Peke is having on this Vladimir this time around. He's had to, had to opt for distortion boots very early on. And look at Selva, he's just pushing. Has it's that bomb on the turret. Ultimate onto the top lane, but that's not something he wants to dive. Take fun coming in from the bot hand side. This could be very dangerous. Niels get caught by the charm. He goes down. Kuban comes out with the blade surge as well to finish him off. And bot lane was able to be stopped by Soaz. Could weather the storm down there with the equalizer. That tower's very low. And Selva again, we saw this uh, actually in the series that they played last time in week two. It was Selva who was the one split pushing. You remember it was in mid lane with Graves. Yeah. And he was the one who was keeping him in it by trading objectives. Uh, this game is going very similarly to how it did last time. Selva did just lose both of his summoners though in the bottom lane. We didn't quite catch it on the stream, but uh, you know, he needs both flash and heal if he really wants to take those kind of split push uh, engages yeah. there against like a rumble. He's going to have a lot of damage later into the game, but he doesn't quite yet. So as now, oh, Kuban knows he's not got his ultimate available. So this is a fairly easy one for Kuban to pick up. No, oh, he's going to try and teleport away. He he's knows gonna he's out. not going to get stunned. He's away. That was very close, Ooh. though. Down to the wire. Just about. But he burns his teleport, and that gives teleport advantage now to Reason Gaming, so they can do what they like with it, and allows Kuban to split push, whereas Soas will not be able to get into a fight just as fast. And Soas does not have any CC, so he will not be able to stop Kuban from getting away from his clutches. Origin this time, they're, they're again running a similar composition with this later game scaling mid lane. However, Peke is behind in mid lane, and Take Fun has done a, a phenomenal job in games one and three on Ari of actually controlling X Peke. You can see 2 0 and 1 now, 240 CS on Ari to the 221, 0, 2 and 1 from Vladimir. So, uh, Take Fun has really been the shining light from that mid lane here for Reason Gaming. Celebra has looked good as well, but Take Fun's doing a lot of work that is uh, maybe not quite as obvious to spot. Yeah, Take Fun to me uh, kind of either has like an amazing game or not quite a great game. Uh, there's no real middle ground for Take Fun, but uh, he does play those assassins, which are high risk, high reward, so that is the case. In the bot lane, still Kuban trading up against Soaz. Has to be very careful though, their vision control is uh, not super good down there. In fact, most of the vision control is all around the Baron area, which is. Uh, a good call by reason, because we do know that Origin like their Baron plays. I hope this game doesn't devolve to that again. Me too, Stress. I really hope it doesn't. Uh, although this time around, looking at it, Origin actually have a composition that should be able to fight that a lot better with a yeah. Rumble from the top lane uh, and a Vladimir. That If you layer Hemoplague and, and Equalizer over the top of each other, that's actually uh, a fairly strong... Sounds like a recipe. It sounds like a recipe for, for disaster. disaster. <laughs> oh, now, that's uh, worrying that you knew where I was going with that. Yeah. Hive mind. A little bit disturbing. Well, we'll see what happens in this mid lane. What is for sure is many minions are dying, and that will be giving Neil some gold. He has a lot of gold on a lot of farm over Selva so far. He's sitting on 10,300 to 8,400 from Selva, so he's got a significant lead, and that has just exacerbated over the last couple of minutes. Mid lane as well, and you can see uh, advantage this time to take fun. So here's the shining light, as you mentioned, on their team. But then again, Kuban is also ahead of Soaz, so there's a lot of factors going over to Reason Gaming. The difference between the AD carries didn't seem to matter in game one, though. Uh, Niels had a lead in game one. He didn't really have a, a whole number of kills. It was mainly from... Uh, farm and then Selva kind of just 
scaled again on Tristana. Yeah. This time he hasn't picked up a whole bunch of kills, so being behind on farm is going to hinder him more than it did in game one. But at the same time, Origin, they have to be careful of that Tristana scaling into the late game. Wards over the wall. It will be Niels picking up the crab. Amazing saying, what the hell? I get more gold from that with my jungle item. <laughs> uh, they will be clearing up these wards in the mid lane, or trying to. They don't have any... Well, they do have a couple sweepers. And there it is. They know there's a ward there, but he needs to take it out. Kuban is now pushing the top lane. He has changed his natural habitat to that lane. Soas is trying to zone him away. Lands both electro harpoons. Will be overheating as well. That's a lot of damage. Kuban will be shoved away here, down to 50% HP. That has allowed Origin to go for the dragon here. Cellar so in the mid chase. lane. That's an equalizer again going wide. And this dragon should be going over to Origin. There we go, second for Origin. So has had to chase Kuban there. Ooh, Peke dodges the charm. Yeah, third time lucky in this situation. Now trying to find Nils as well. Trying not to push too far forwards, take fun. Uh, Fairly valuable to this team of Reason Gaming. If he drops, it is disastrous. Yeah, and the reason for that is because uh, Kubon with his teleport is still available. Soaz had to make sure that Kubon couldn't teleport. If he teleports or tried to, he would die. Uh, and that basically gives Origin the ability to take the dragon. We're back in almost the same situation as game number one. Two, two dragons apiece, five kills to four. Most of the outer, well, all of the outer turrets, some of the inner ones down at this point. This is where Origin started just trying to go for Baron. They looked at it for a second then, but uh, didn't actually opt to, and I really hope they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Probably had flashbacks from game one. Uh, in mid lane, they will be again farming it out. That is the same build from Xpeki that we saw before. Has gone for the Will of Ancients, this time for the Abyssal Scepter first. That's the A for Wisp. See where that one goes. Could be the Ludens. It yeah. would make sense since he spams E and Q all day, so you'd be getting those procs pretty consistently. And the difference from that was he wouldn't have a Zonyas this game if he does opt for the Luden's Echo. He's a little while uh, away from that. Still only sat on about 800 gold, so he, he won't get there anytime soon. But that certainly would be an interesting tweak to his build if he does opt for that. It would. It would definitely amp up his damage output. Uh, let's take a look at his opposing mid laner, what he's done. He did pick up that Luden's, of course, at the very early stage of the game. Has gone for the Death Cap since then. Again, another spike in his damage. Top lane, looking towards the uh, looking towards the Blade of the Rune King over the Zephyr, which we have sometimes seen on those top lane Aurelias. Thinking about that Ludens even more, I wonder, with Tides of Blood, if Vladimir uses Tides of Blood to multiple champions around Yeah. Him, I wonder what the priority is on that. Because there's a couple of weird interactions with, like, Karthus and, yeah. and Ludens, is if you ult, uh, apparently... Some people uh, did a load of testing. Apparently, it's the first champion picked in the game. Oh, requires really? the Ludens proc. Yeah, it doesn't matter which lane it was in, whichever was first picked. Very interesting. Uh, that, I mean, I, I'm yet to have oh, official Kuban. conclusion on that. But again, Origin, stop going for Baron, please. Yeah, they have <laughs> done. However, Kubon used his teleport and actually cancelled it because he's continuing to push in his bottom lane. It's just Reason Gaming. Their job is to stop the recalls. So is going back. So is the jungler and so is Peke. Reason Gaming don't manage to do so, but they're they going to take off. advantage of this. They'll try and push in the middle lane. They'll be able to take an inner turret from this one. And Peke cancelled his teleport too late. So he's neither coming in from the side or coming in from the base. He's just too late for the mid lane. Oh man, this is Origin. That was just, really good. Uh, again, they've just gone for the, the Baron without setting it up, and Reason had full vision. Look at the wards that are around the Baron area here for Reason Gaming. You can see them pink wards, green wards. They're not even fresh wards here. And Origin, reluctant to even sweep them out here, just go for the Baron. This time they know there's no teleport available, so maybe they could have looked to have gone for it, but it's still a risky play. They're waiting around here for I don't know what. I feel like we've been in this position before. And it lost Origin the game last yes. time. They can't afford to make that same mistake this time, but they do have better scaling. Get Peke into a side lane. Soaz has teleport, put Peke in the top lane, push in the middle lane with the rest of the team, just enough to be presence there, and then make reason choose. Who do they stop? Soaz or Peke? Peke has both, well, has his flash up so he oh can God. still get out. They're going for the Baron again. Soaz with the teleport this time can come into the fight. Uh, Grag Assault is about to come up. Everything is up pretty much, apart from actually the Sijuani ult, They're still, still not there. To it. They're still on this Baron at this point in Origin. They're getting chunked down pretty hard right Selva now. Selva does get tagged up. Peke actually thrown into the back line, but he goes down. Miffy is this game one all over again. Niels will be going down. The mid laner dies as well. Miffy is dying 
dying and will tick out from the Ignite. He bleeds out and Zayu and the rest of the reason gaming. This is a no-brainer. However, there's the ultimate. There is the equalizer. Lipic will be keeping him healthy with his monsoon. But this is dicey. This is so risky from reason gaming. Everyone is so low. But Kubon is in a position to zone away Soaz. Soaz has managed to compensate for the weakness in his team. Just about. Just. I mean, why are Origin going for these Barons? Why? I, I, the million dollar I feel question like stress. I should have an answer for this, but I don't. It's nonsensical. But it, it is nonsensical, and th they have a composition that, so as with Teleport, they knew they had the TP advantage, they could push one lane, Peke in the other, you, you just show in mid lane. You, you would clear in the enemy jungle, make sure that nobody can actually come through the jungle to stop your laners and, and kind of go for a 2 or a 3v1. That's the basics of this kind of composition when you have uh, a teleport on your top laner and a split pusher from your middle lane. That's how you run this 1-3-1 kind of style. And Origin just don't want to do it. But they did it in game two. We had, <laughs> we had ex I split know. pushing, so they're I capable of doing so. They're just not. Um, again, take fun, stray charms. Just one of them needs to hit for them to pick up a kill. I've seen that so far in this game. He's been farming very well in this game, in fact. Pretty much a, a Vladimir uh, CS total is what we're looking at. 300 farm for him currently. Top lane is just getting stronger and stronger. Now has that magic resist. He even mentioned uh, how heavy on the magic resist that or how heavy on the magic damage origin is in this game apart from Niels. And Amazing thinks he's caught Zayu. He's fairly tanky though, not quite the target that he wants to go for, knocking Amazing into the team as well. Uh, Kuban onto the top side of the fight. Take fun into the bottom side, trying to get someone down. Setup will be jumping away from the fight. That's oh, not quite the right place damage. He is so fast. He will be able to get onto the back lines. He gets punted into the tower, but he's able to get away very quickly. He should be going down to take fun here. There he is. Zayu takes him out with the W, the drunken rage. That was actually a two for one in favor of Reason Gaming, they tunneled hard on Salva. They tunneled so hard. Niels is still alive though, and he has a lot of damage. Oh, boomerang blade, and uh, amazing. We'll go for the re-engage as well. There comes the backswing, and they should pick up this kill here. Not quite. He'll go for the crab instead. He won't fight back. Origin really want to take this dragon from this. Soaz has oh, baited them past Soaz. him. Soaz in the bush, but Kuma will turn around with the damage. There's the blade search now. Niels is oh, right on top of it. He goes for the first kill, looking for the second. He has been charmed. There is the, again, return on the distortion, or rather the return on the orb of deception. That is not a LeBlanc, but that is a boomerang blade onto the Ari. Oh, neither team is going to be able to take Dragon Niels with a massive amount of damage right now, but can't really 1v3. He was a little bit weak there, didn't know whether Spell Shield was available or not. But, I mean, Origin, they should have been ahead, and Reason Gaming have now taken the lead in the gold. And, I mean, they've got the better scaling... AD carry. They, they've got Salva, who's been typically in better positions. He did get caught out in that last fight by X Peke, but Origin, for everything that they fixed in Game 2, they've gone to exactly the same problems here in Game 3. Yeah, uh, but the only reason they were able to do so well in that last team fight was because Peke had both his summons available. Yeah. And yes, he's gone Distortion again, but it's going to be a while until he gets those again. And if Dragon's that's their there. crutch on when they can fight, that's a serious issue for them because that's a big window in which uh, Reason Gaming can exploit that. Origin, stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> stop. Go, d stop it. Don't do this. Like, uh, why? You know everybody is up. Now you have to back away and you've lost health to the Baron They're already. They're still on it. They're still on it. I, I do not understand this decision making. This is not what you'd expect. Now Amazing's forced out. Niels has been charmed. Oh, he takes another hit from the Q. The Baron is still being taken out. Take Fun is looking for the charm. There's the ultimate. He has been caught there on the back lines. Then the shutdown for Niels. Tazayu is now on the back lines as well. But Living, does the rest of the team have the damage? Kubon and Selva trying to jump back and the forth. Binding. Oh, the binding onto Seneva. He gets the rocket jump just in time. Amazing is low enough where they don't want to go for the re-engage. <sighs> Again, this is so similar to game one where it shouldn't work out, but they somehow get a pick onto... It was actually Take Fun in the first game who again got caught into that Baron. He was just way too far forward. But they can't rely on that. They can't rely on the opponent making mistakes to make their own play work. And that's what they've been trying. They're trying it again. You just walked over the crab. You, you just walked over it. They're relying now on uh, Zayu not being there, which is correct, but neither is Amazing yet. He is just joining the fight now. 
ultimate from Greg is not available. Take Fun still dead. So they know they have the timing on this. Amazing but it's, again, they're making very risky plays. That one was the safest they made yet, taking into consideration that Take Fun was still down. So Origin this time get away with it. But man, are they frustrating me with always going for Baron. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Also, Miss Might. Um, Peke was the one to pick it up with the last Tides of Blood. It survived on like 50 HP. So again, it could have just been a stray skill shot from Reason Gaming, which could have picked it up. However, just forget all that because Origin have managed to pick up the Baron. Yeah. It now means that they can actually apply pressure onto Reason Gaming. They finally have the objective that they needed so badly to make something happen. Uh, it wasn't pretty, but now they have it. Now they should 1-3-1. With a Vladimir yep. and uh, a teleport available, this is a, the situation where they can actually afford to do that. Although there is a, a lot of wave clear on the Reason Gaming side of things between that Static Shiv and uh, on Tristan and the Ludens Ari. Oh, it's it's still touch and go here for Origin. Yes, they got the Baron. Yes, they now have a slight gold lead, but Reason Gaming still could steal away that final spot in the Grand Finals. You know, I've just got to say that I've been so impressed by the Challenger teams as we've come into playoffs. It's like they really just knew that the pressure is up and the stakes are there, and they just turned it all on. They they practiced, obviously, and now in these games have just looked stronger and stronger. Lowland Lions were just a different Lions from what we've seen. Gamers 2, really just uh, the major problems that we saw during the split uh, showed themselves in full during that game. And very interesting for on the fan vote. 88 to 12 here. Stuck at 12. Stuck at 12. <laughs> very interesting. Apparently, it was at 13, but they lost 1%. Oh. Well, 13's unlucky, so you don't want... It is, yeah. Maybe that's what will tip the scales in their favor. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. Let's take a look at some of the items here, Stress. It's been a while since we've paid attention to them, but these teams have been farming into a frenzy. Top lane has gone for the Rylai's. Of course, this is kind of the standard build for all of the magic pen coming in from Soaz. Peke in the mid lane has um, still yet to build his uh, uh, Ludens, but actually opted towards the Zonis Hourglass, which is probably a safer build at this stage in the game. Yeah. I uh, I have to agree with that. Top lane, now the uh, more Mount Mortius has been completed, all that magic damage will be uh, mitigated by that item. And in the bot lane, Saliva has acknowledged that he's been getting caught and has gone for the Quicksilver Sash. This time the lane management is much better from Origin. You look at bot lane, it will start to push in or continue to pushing in. They're going to get a, a turret in top lane easily here. Mid lane is already at the inhibitor as well. So Origin this time are using their, uh, their Baron buff a lot smarter for their second time around. And now they're pushed up in front of the inhibitor. This should be a uh, dead inhibitor turret. Ooh, QSS. Oh, they're really going to go for the fight underneath the tower. There comes the Gragas ultimate. Xpec is now underneath that turret. The tower is dropping very low. Neil tries to get the last couple auto works down. However, Kuban is now jumping onto that back line. Take Fun is dropping low. Selva gets caught again. And that will be the Monsoon blowing them away. Hopefully, the disengage that they need. Everyone's drops low, but no one has died just yet. Reason Gaming are now on the chase. This is risky considering how strong Niels is, and they do back away to their turret. Yeah, Niels is leading the charge, though, and that's not a position that I'm actually too keen. Niels is stepping up to the plate, taking turret aggro as well. That's about the fifth time I've seen him do it this series. This time they get the turret from him. Whoa, that charm was a little too close to co for comfort. Niels has to back away. No ultimates available yet. Sayu, no ultimate. He does follow through. There is the binding, but Niels can't quite get in range. He gets the boomerang blade, which, again, does not quite land. Niels is on the front line. Uh, this is this is very risky, but it's high, high reward. High risk, rather. Saliva trying to get a range. That will be the okay. inhibitor going they down. Got they it. got what they came for. Now they should be leaving. Yes, they need to hightail it out of there. Big wave in the bottom lane is going to push up to the inhibitor turret as well. Sayu so ult not available for about another 10 seconds, so we can't blast somebody back, but they want to keep the uh, the pressure on here on the escape through the jungle. That will, however, signal the end of it. Dragon is coming up in 20 seconds. Which team are going to get there first? It looks like Origin are going to recall out, but uh, they will be back just in time. Yeah, Selva will be going down to the bot lane here to clear out these minion waves before they potentially set up for a dragon. 
There's three Dragons, the two currently on the scoreboard. Reason Gaming would really like another one here so they can uh, have the threat of going for a fifth if we get down the road. That will be 12 minutes from now at a minimum. Reason Gaming will be the first ones to go for it. They're trying to nuke it down as fast as possible. They do not have the smite there just yet as Swajani is actually turning away their smite as the smite from Origin is now here. Drag the dragon out. And yeah, okay, wise from Reason Gaming. There's no reason to fight over this dragon because there's no real risk from it. All it gives them is that extra movement speed which is not effective combat stats. It's not combat stats, but it makes Origin a little bit slippery, oh, or yeah. more slippery. Peke is going to get to the back line even easier. And uh, Niels is going to be able to position even easier in fights as well. OG swing down to the bottom lane. Silver clearing out red buff in the top jungle as well. This is still a very close game. Origin certainly have the lead. Their Baron buff has expired, though. Mm. And that uh, makes this push a little bit more difficult here for Origin as well. This has been a pretty stellar performance by Reason Gaming, though, no matter what happens in this series. I do you think this uh, Reason Gaming is stronger than the Gamers 2 we saw yesterday, if it comes down to that? But this is still all down to uh, potentially even a final fight, which seems to happen very often between these two teams for some reason. Uh, Niels now pushing his bottom turret. Now 42 minutes into the game, make that 43. Fast approaching that mark. Top lane, though, is something they'll have to deal with. So, Reason Gaming, you either fight here or you back off and concede this turret. Choose one. Yeah, problem for Origin is the minion wave just died in front of them and still about a third of the turret health left. So, somebody's going to swing top lane. They're still waiting on the bottom lane minions to come through, but Origin now, they're going to step up onto the base. Niels is the one tanking up the tower to begin oh, with. Ultimate oh. has come out. Onto the back line, lands onto Tristana. It will be amazing going into the back lines, and Xpeke goes down into his pool. Uh, take fun as well, comes in with some more damage, but the tower will be dropping. Xpeke jumps forward, he gets one, goes into Zonia's. Selva, will he be the next target? He'll have to rocket jump away as his ally dies. Origin, they go three for zero. They take the bottom inhibitor, and all of a sudden, this looks like Origin's game to lose. It, it, it's Origin about to win this game, to be honest. Origin have pushed up to the Nexus turrets. That's the first one going down. Massive death timers still on Reason Gaming, and it's been a little bit shaky from Origin, but they have unseated Reason Gaming. Yeah, Salva here. He's one versus four, but he should be falling here. Peke is trying to follow up onto the spawn pad. It doesn't matter, though, because Origin finally in this series pull it together and take this series two and won against Reason Gaming, who put up such a solid performance. But Origin, do make it to the Grand Finals. And it wasn't easy. No, <laughs> it was not. That was not a pretty game, and that was not a pretty series. Congratulations to Origin for making it, but that was not the Origin we saw during the group stage by any stretch of the imagination. Hats off to them for winning. Hats off to Reason for, for you know, putting up a great fight here. That's three much longer games or two much longer games than we were expecting in this series. But Origin have done it so far.